Today, we're hitting a tombstone with The Undertaker in every WWE game. To this day, the Deadman has appeared in over 50 wrestling games. The first one being WWF WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge for the NES. But the first time we'd see a tombstone was WWF Royal Rumble for the Sega Genesis. Up to this point, none of the previous games had proper finishers. This was legit the first one. Imagine playing a wrestling game without finishers. WWF Rage in the Cage and WWF Raw are up next, which are basically just updated versions of the Royal Rumble game. More wrestlers, there's voice acting, and sick little movies too. You are about to experience defeat as cold and dark as the grave itself. Undertaker's voiceover is fantastic. And he's got red gloves in this one. I don't know, but whatever. WWF WrestleMania, the arcade game, is up next. And this changed the game big time. To this day, I still think this is one of the hardest wrestling games of all time. Legitimately. That's coming from someone who actually played it at an arcade back in the day. Damn, that makes me feel ancient. <laughs> Dogs come flying out of your hands. Like, Yokozuna has the, the powder. Like, the concept was sweet. It was really good. The tombstone is backwards. I don't know why. This game's kind of a hot mess, but in a really good way. <laughs> WWF In Your House for the PlayStation 1. Shout out Ruby for the gameplay because I could absolutely not find a legitimate working copy of this game anywhere. So, here you go. Onward to the N64 with WWF Warzone. I thought this game looked amazing when I was a kid. I sunk so many hours into the N64 WWF games, and this is honestly where it all started. Now, WWF Attitude was Acclaim's sequel to WWF Warzone. We actually have entrances this time, which is sweet, and even more voice lines. Someone should start digging your grave. Stop the voices! Stop them! The gameplay is pretty much the same as Warzone. It, it just doesn't really hold up that great, you know, as time went by. But I remember it fondly, so I'm okay with that. Speaking of fondly, WWF WrestleMania 2000. This one is higher up on a lot of people's all-time wrestling games list, and that's honestly for very good reason. Aki Engine, crazy roster. It, like, it didn't have the best graphics, and it didn't need the best graphics to be enjoyable. And it did not have the best graphics. <laughs> you want to talk about graphics, though, you're probably not talking about WWF SmackDown for the PS1. But that's okay, because the game itself is fun, right? It's a fun game. Right, guys? WWF Royal Rumble for the Dreamcast. Now, this, I think, is one of the most unique WWE games ever. Like, look at this microphone, first of all. But in this game, you choose a partner that you can do, like, combos with. And the stages can even change mid-match i had never played it until i started doing these kinds of videos and each time i play it i'm like hmm this is pretty cool wwf no mercy many people would put this as their number one spot during this time undertaker had adopted the uh american badass persona so his finisher was no longer the tombstone it was actually the last ride but since this is a tombstone video have no fear the undertaker's completely legitimate biological brother kane will be hitting a tombstone himself Man, what a friggin' game this is. Go play it if you never have, please. WWF SmackDown 2, know your role. It's Mr. Badass once again, but this time Undertaker has the tombstone as a regular grapple move. So you don't even need to finish her to use it or to spam it over and over and over and over and over. WWF Road to WrestleMania for the Game Boy Advance. Guess who comes to the rescue once again because somebody's too busy with his damn bandana on a motorcycle, can't do a tombstone. If you were thinking about going back to play Road to WrestleMania on Game Boy Advance, by the way, yeah, uh, don't. Just absolutely do not. SmackDown, just bring it for the PS2. We are moving forward to the PS2 era of wrestling games. Some may call it the Golden Age, maybe the Silver Age, I don't know. Taker's actual entrance song from Lip Biscuit is in, and Fred Durst himself is also in the game, which is cool as hell. But Undertaker, once again, with a tombstone as a normal grapple, which made my job a lot easier, to be honest. And we're moving on. WWF Raw for the Xbox. Shout out to Patrick Schmidt for this 16-year-old footage of The Undertaker hitting a tombstone in WWF Raw. It is the only one that exists on the internet. Isn't that crazy? WrestleMania 18 for the GameCube. Now, to me, the GameCube games felt like the SmackDown ones, but like on crack, which was a, which was a good thing. I overlooked these for so long, and maybe people don't expect much from a wrestling game on a Nintendo console, you know, but like these got better and better with every single release. Hey, if you enjoyed uh, Road to WrestleMania for the Game Boy Advance, then you'll love Road to WrestleMania X8 for the Game Boy Advance. 
not much to say about this one. <laughs> the Game Boy Advance games just... I appreciate them, but they definitely did not age well. But we can still hit a little tombstone for good measure and keep it moving. WWE SmackDown Shut Your Mouth. This is another one of the SmackDown games that usually ends up fairly high on most people's lists. This one's actually got a whole new tombstone animation completely, even though it's just a regular move again. But it's enough to get the job done, it's enough to put in the video, and we're moving on. Back to the GameCube for WrestleMania 19, and I'm telling you now, if you haven't tried any of the GameCube wrestling games, you should go out of your way to do so. WrestleMania 18 wasn't too crazy, but 19 introduced some really cool things that I enjoy quite a bit, like Revenge Mode, where you basically just on a live a bunch of construction workers and other things. It's honestly pretty f sweet. <laughs> WWE Raw 2 for the Xbox, much like the first Raw, never played it on the original Xbox. It seemed like a slightly updated version of the previous game. And unfortunately, this was not the last time that there would be a console exclusive WWE game. Dun, dun, dun. But hold on to your butts, the cream of the crop, here comes the pain. The wrestling game that just sits alone atop my personal list as my favorite wrestling game of all time. Give me a Here Comes the Pain remaster with the current roster, and I I will never say a bad word about wrestling or a wrestling game for the rest of my life. Really, I won't. WWE Day of Reckoning, another GameCube banger, and also the return of the dead man. How about that? We have seen the last of the American badass for now, and look at this tombstone with authority. This right here is a pro Day of Reckoning household, and I will hear nothing about it. WWE Survivor Series. Back to the Game Boy Advance, where we've had nothing but pure ass up to this point, and that continues here with Survivor Series. This game stinks like doo-doo. Here is a tombstone. Let's move on. WWE SmackDown vs. Raw and SmackDown vs. Raw 2006. A new era is upon us with these new games on the PS2. I put them both on about the same level. They're very similar in a lot of ways, but of course, 2006 introduced GM mode to wrestling fans, and these games are starting to look better and better year after year. WrestleMania 21 for the Xbox. Shout out to Sean O'Connor for this clip from WrestleMania 21 for the Xbox. The final Xbox exclusive WWE game, another one that I didn't play, again, because I didn't have an Xbox, because my mama didn't want to buy me one, but that's okay. But if you want to talk about exclusive, look no further than WWE Aftershock for the Nokia N-Gage. You ever seen one of those? Shout out Galactic Wrestling Federation for this. Playing this on a Nokia phone is crazy. Like absolute psychotic behavior and I am here for it. Back to the Day of Reckoning series for Day of Reckoning 2 on the GameCube, the final WWE game on GameCube actually. And again, I feel like these GameCube games just got better and better. We remember you fondly, GameCube. Godspeed into the night. SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. This was one of the first games I played back when I got an Xbox 360. Spent so much time in this GM mode. I think this was actually recorded on the PS2 version, but you, you get what I'm saying. Here's another tombstone from the dead man, but I want to talk about SmackDown vs. Raw 2008. Because look, I have heard a lot of people say that this was their favorite. Like a lot, like way more people than I would have expected as the years go by. And I just want to say, really? Like what? what is it, what is it exactly? Just let me know, let me know down below. SmackDown vs. Raw 2009, very similar to 2008. If you ask me to tell them apart, I would say, joke's on you, can't do it. I don't know, I don't think I could. They removed GM mode, of course, in 2009, though, because of course they did. And this would be a trend moving forward. Don't, no, don't get me started on that. Mo just, let's go. WWE Legends of WrestleMania. Now, this was also the year where WWE decided to throw a little curveball to the gaming world by releasing this game. I remember really liking the idea of it, but I think the execution just fell a little short with the quick time events and the gameplay. I just... I don't know. It also took me a very long time to figure out how to do a damn tombstone, but that's neither here nor there. I wish this game was better, but it's just not. <laughs> Back to the SmackDown vs. Raw series with SmackDown vs. Raw 2010 and 2011. Around this time, those Road to WrestleMania modes were going crazy. It almost made up for the lack of GM mode. These, however, would be the final two entries in the SmackDown vs. Raw series until they went in a new direction and dropped another curveball with WWE All-Stars. Now this one, I know it's a little divisive. I like this one a lot. <laughs> it was over the top, insane arcade nonsense. And like, I thought it was a, a sweet, I thought it was sweet. Like, look at the height on the moves and stuff. Are you kidding me? 
That's crazy. Whatever. I liked it. Moving on. Now, going from All-Stars to WWE 12 is, is quite the shock because now they're really starting to step away from any of the arcade stuff and focus on simulation gameplay for better or worse and that was that was pretty apparent with wwe 12 with the presentation the 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 replays camera angles everything zack Ryder really just tried to kick out a 3.1 huh that's crazy next year thq would follow up with wwe 13 which is pretty much wwe 12 in an attitude era skin but that's cool because i like the attitude era and the cover was sick I'll definitely give it that. We got Wake Up Taunts this year, too, which was also cool. Tombstone once again, folks. We're moving. We're blazing through this. But now on to what I believe is the best WWE game with the name 2K in front of it, WWE 2K14. It also featured the infamous Defeat the Streak mode, which I didn't know this. I actually had to play before I unlocked Undertaker. Like, Undertaker's locked behind the mode. You can't use him unless you play the mode. I did not know that, but I found it out. WWE 2K15, a new era is upon us. 2K has officially taken over the WWE franchise full-time. There is no turning back now. This was the first WWE game released on the next generation of consoles at the time, like PS4, Xbox One, and the graphics took a crazy bump. Now, WWE 2K16, 17, and 18. Oh, man, I would have a terrible time trying to tell these games apart, if you ask me. Back in the day, I had... 100 plus 200 plus episodes of my career for each one of these games and they all just kind of blend together but <laughs> i also got a trophy in 2k18 for something i don't know this is not a trophy hunt this is a trophy hunt but this is not a trophy hunt. stepping away from 2k for a second to show love to king of fighters all-star this game released uh, a wwe dlc a few years back and undertaker is actually one of the playable characters along with like john cena i think becky's in there too this game is actually really cool i was pleasantly surprised and they got a bunch of wrestling moves in it it was sweet up next wwe 2k 19 turn your brightness down shout out to all the incredible pc modders that whole modding community that kept this game alive longer than it should have been we all know when 2k 20 dropped a lot of people went back to playing 2k 19 and for a good reason because WWE 2K20 was ass. If you haven't played this one, consider yourself lucky. Because it, it barely worked. It, it barely works. Every time I do one of these videos, I swear I'm not lying. Every time I do one of these videos, 2K20 crashes right after I finish recording the match. I, I promise you, I'm not lying. So WWE then decided that the answer to a bad game release was to throw another curveball into the mix with WWE 2K Battlegrounds, which honestly wasn't too bad. It got very repetitive. It like it lacked any kind of depth. But on the surface, it, it was cool. It's not All-Stars, but it's okay. WWE 2K22 is next, and this is where 2K uh, did, uh, did a fairly good job at redeeming themselves. The game was drastically improved over WWE 2K20, and it was, it was definitely a step in the right direction, which they needed more than anything. Which brings us to today and our most recent Undertaker Tombstone WWE 2K23. I would say next to WWE 2K14, this is probably the best 2K game of the recent era. It's not perfect by any means, uh, but it improved upon what they started in, in 22. And uh, I hope this is a trend that continues into the future. You know what I'm saying? Because we would love that. Folks, that is a tombstone with The Undertaker in every WWE game. Let me know down below what moves you want to see next. Subscribe to the channel. We are on the road to 2 million. Love you guys. I'll see you next time.